It's a nightmare scenario. You're in the middle of the ocean and your ship sinks so fast you can't even send a distress. It might not seem real, but it can happen. The MV Derbyshire was an oboe carrier that sank in 1980. She was almost 300 meters long and it's believed she sank within seconds rather than minutes. What about another scenario? You've slightly more time and you can send a distress. You give your last known position, but that was taken six minutes previously. In that time, your ship could easily have traveled a couple of miles. In both scenarios, one piece of equipment could give rescuers vital information, the EPIRB. An EPIRB is an emergency position indicating radio beacon. They're standard equipment on vessels nowadays, and they can even be carried by individuals in kayaks or if you're a hiker or something. Today though, we'll take a look at a standard maritime EPIRB that would be carried on a ship. This is a typical example. You've got the main body of the EPIRB, which is waterproof and able to float. You have a switch for manual activation and sensors on the bottom for automatic activation. And finally, you've got the antenna, which needs a clear view of the sky. EPIRBs should be mounted in float-free containers. These basically are just protective housings with a hydrostatic release that will cut the EPIRB free when submerged. In our earlier scenarios, should a ship sink before you can send a distress, in theory, the EPIRB will float to the surface and automatically activate. That's where those two sensors kick in. All they do is detect if a conductive medium like seawater is present. The small amount of current that passes between the contacts tells the EPIRB that it's been submerged and needs to activate. Alternatively, if you have time to carry the unit and take it into your survival craft, then you can activate it manually using the switch. Either way, you now have an EPIRB desperately trying to tell the outside world that help is needed. To do that, it needs a clear view of the sky. It needs to get a direct line of contact with any one of the satellites in the COSPAS SARSAT system. These are a network of satellites orbiting the Earth designed to pick up these distress signals. Every EPIRB will transmit its own identity to the satellite system. In addition to that, modern ones also transmit their GPS location so they can be immediately found. Of course, even if you have an older model that is not GPS enabled, the satellite can still find you. What it does is measure the Doppler shift in the frequency of the transmission to work out your position. Basically, if the signal has a higher frequency than expected, the satellite is moving towards the transmitter. And if it has a lower frequency, the satellite is moving away. The maths is complex, but that frequency shift is enough to give a location. Of course, GPS enabled beacons bypass all of that and just tell the satellite where they are. So, now a satellite knows the identity and position of a distress beacon that's been activated. It's still not much to go on, but it's enough to get help mobilized. Satellites send the distress down to monitoring stations, where it's then passed on to regional control centers. These centers have access to a database of all EPIRBs that have been registered. This gives them information about the vessel that the EPIRBs registered to so that they can plan the rescue appropriately. For example, if a center detects an activation of an EPIRB from a yacht, they will know the color of the hull, the size of the yacht, and things like that. All vital information when an aircraft is sent to search. Likewise, if a center detects an activation of an EPIRB from a commercial vessel, they'll be able to attempt contact using radio or satellite communications. They may then contact the vessel's owners who can provide passenger and crew manifests or details of the cargo that's carried. Again, all vital information when planning a rescue. The Rescue Coordination Center can then commit assets be it passing ships or aircraft or dedicated search and rescue services. They will have an accurate position and details of who needs rescuing, all of which increase the chances of a successful rescue. So what can you do to make sure this essential piece of kit brings you help when you need it? Well, as we mentioned, it needs to be mounted in a clear space so that it can float free should your vessel sink rapidly. If you take it into a lifeboat, make sure you activate it manually and follow the instructions on the unit itself. It will probably say to tether it to your life raft, but to then leave the device itself floating in the sea. Either way, make sure it has a clear line of sight to the sky. You don't want anything to hinder the path of the signal from the unit to the satellite. And finally, make sure it's registered. Giving rescue authorities the details of your vessel can make all the difference. Give the folks in the helicopter the best chance of finding you. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Hopefully you found it interesting and maybe learned something new. For more videos like this every other Friday, be sure to subscribe right here on the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.